Hey guys, it's Sade here and in today's video we are going to be building a pergola or pergola. I'm still not really sure how to say that word, but we're partnering run up with my friends over at Flymo to bring you this DIY. This space was kind of abandoned and unloved, but we decided to turn it into a social spot slash beer garden if you will because it's a decent size. Watch part one of this whole makeover which is the DIY flower beds. I'll link it in the top right in the description, but all of those plants you'll see there have actually been turned into some really nice flower bed so make sure you go and watch that. I ended up going to a place called Travis Perkins because they had the most affordable wood. It was treated so it would withstand any kind of weather and I ended up picking up three 4x4s and 12 2x6s. All of this is going to be linked down below so don't worry and I'm also going to link down below some useful pergola blog resources that I found helpful as well for you guys. Anyway, I'm gonna show you this, we didn't actually end up using it, but it's something called postcrete and it's a type of concrete that you can use to quick set and hold your posts or beams upright in some holes that we had actually dug, but you can see the massive blocks of concrete there. We couldn't sink the poles deep enough, so we decided to just actually attach them to the walls. Thought I'd show you this bit, pretty simple step. We had some leftover fence slats and we put those in using these lost head nails just to give us some more privacy so that you couldn't see through the gaps from the outside. This next step is only necessary if you're going to be attaching the posts onto a wall of some sort, as we're doing, but if you're gonna sink them into concrete or if you're gonna be using post shoes to hold them upright, you don't need to do this. In all honesty, I wish that we didn't have to do this because it was so difficult, but yeah, we got there in the end. But anyway, this was a struggle. So what you're seeing here is really roundabout way of doing something that should be quite simple, but we had to use these screws to drill into the masking tape on the wall so we knew where to drill into the wall separate to the beam instead of being able to do everything together. Those wall screws that you're gonna need are something called frame screws and they have got a really thick, sharp thread that goes into the brick and keeps it really firmly secured in the brick because obviously this is suspended above people's heads so we needed to make sure that it is really secure. I'm going to be linking all of these tools and screws and stuff down in the description box for you guys just to take the thinking out of it for you but we went in with those frame screws once we drilled through all the wood and then we drilled through the brick and we secured them in place it really wasn't simple it took so long but once you've got the right tools and um, they started to fly up quite quickly We did that with all three posts and then we moved on to the support beams which leaned on the wall. So this pergola is a lean to structure, meaning that half of it sits in the ground and half of it leans against the house. The part that leans against the house, we were using the two by sixes and this is kind of a big first project for us and we wanted to make sure it was really safe but I think we went a little bit overboard with how many screws we were going to put in the, in the wood into the wall. So I think we started off measuring like every 10 centimetres or something silly. We ended up only actually going in and screwing into the wall every two foot or say. So just using a spirit level to keep it level and we just used a thin screwdriver to pile it and drive into that masking tape that we put on the wall so that we knew where to drill on top of. We cut the second support beam down to size and repeated the process and we had a pretty secure structure on the wall. Cue Rob doing the strength test. 
<laughs> One more for the talent camera. <laughs> The next step was to work out where the support beams were gonna sit on the post on the other side. So I just used this nifty little device that I got from Amazon, I think it was like two pounds or something. And I just used it to level out how high up the posts I needed to mark. And then we went in and we secured those support beams and it was actually so simple. Again, this is linked down below. Everything I'm using is linked down below. Okay, I need to explain something and I hope that I'm gonna be able to do it well enough for you guys to understand, but that mark that we just made on that post, we needed to drop it by five centimeters because of the way that we were laying the cross beams of the pergola, we were using a notch system. So we cut a notch into those cross beams to drop into the support beam, kind of like a tongue and groove situation. Anyway, you'll see it a little bit later on, but just to make sure that those cross beams were level, from one side to the other, we had to drop it by five centimeters. I really hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, I'm really sorry, <laughs> but that's what we had to do. <laughs> this bit was so nice and simple to do. So these timber drive screws have got no thread towards the top, as you can see. So they don't split or crack the wood, but you can literally just drive them straight into the wood, no having to pre-drill or anything. So that was glorious. And then we started to make progress. So we measured up where that front cross beam was gonna fit. So the floor plan of this pergola isn't perfectly straight. It kind of goes in towards the end. So that meant every single cross beam was gonna be cut differently. So we just measured out using a pencil, marked whereabouts we needed to do this notch system. And you'll see in a second, this is what I meant. So this notch that I'm about to drive into this timber was five centimeters deep. And that meant that when it's slot into the support beam, sorry, so many beams and posts, so many words. When it slot into the support beam, it just literally slid in. It was amazing, it was so satisfying. But I just used my circular saw here to drive little cuts into it and then used a chisel just to knock them all out, smooth it off and round off the edges. Very important, please remember to use a mask and goggles and actually earplugs, I didn't use these this day and I had a really bad headache the next day, so please make sure that you're protecting everything. Um, but we ended up measuring 14 centimeters from the edge of that notch so that it didn't overhang over the wall too much, but it gave a nice little design. And here we go, the first test, we were like, ooh, but it literally slotted in perfectly and it was so satisfying. But that's why we had to do the five centimeter drop so that that pergola cross beam on top was actually perfectly level and we smashed it. Literally, like <laughs> literally, I can't believe it. And it's straight as well. We managed to do it. Like, we managed to do it. That wasn't too hard. And that was the longest one because now all the other ones just need a bracket in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what we need to do now is decide where to put the bracket. So we've got ten slats. I don't think ten. No, I don't want ten. It's too many. It's, it's too much. And it's. I know. I think it's too much. Yeah, it's too much. So we'll have four of each. So that's when me and Rob started to do some wacky maths. I don't know what is wrong with me these days. I can't do simple maths. It's crazy. But we ended up measuring out where the eight cross beams were going to sit on top of that whole support beam structure. And these are joist hangers and they were like 80p from Wix. And you literally just have to nail them in, which I was a bit uncertain about at first, but they are so strong. You nail them in, you put your cross beam in, cut it down to size, drop it in. And oh, I just can't even explain this part from here on was just light work we were absolutely flying through it it 
it started to get quite late and we didn't want to use a circular saw anymore and disturb the neighbours so we just went ahead and painted just to make the best use of our time. <laughs> I find that clip so funny. Rob was absolutely fed up with his life. He had to cut crut he had to cut those posts off the overhang because we didn't measure up beforehand because we just drilled them to the wall because we didn't want to make any wrong measurements and have too short of posts etc so he had to manually cut all those down and it was a bit stressful for him but anyway final cross beam in we were so happy it was pretty much done oh we just we were so tired guys this took way longer than we expected but once we had the right tools etc it was a breeze celebration dance And this is the paint that we used, the Cuprinol Silver Cops. It's actually really nice paint. Some people said that it doesn't really last very long, but I mean, it's only 10 pounds per tub. I bought four and realized we only need like two and a half. So we returned some, which was great. And my hair was just being wacky. This was like day five of no washing, sawdust in every crevice, sweaty, greasy mess, who cares? Um, because we were getting to the end of the project. But yeah, it was going on really quite nicely, but it did take a couple of coats. And in fact, I think I still need to do another coat. So I will be doing that at some point. So three coats, maybe four in total. Guys, sun whatever it's called sunstroke is real I got really queasy that next day I don't know if it was a mixture between the loudness of the circular saw and the heat of the day before but I was on top of my fluids I really was but I felt so ill so please just make sure that you're taking care in the sun when you do this sort of stuff anyway we are about to go into the reveal but I want to start us off with a little pizza making montage we bought the uni pizza maker and it was incredible and I want to show you how good my one was because it was actually amazing but we'll do a little before of what the pergola looked like and then we will reveal what it looks like now. Anyway, that is it for today's video, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this DIY beginner pergola video. I am gonna be hanging some festoon lights on there, so watch out for that over on my Instagram. Anyway, if you haven't already, turn on your notification bells because I've got a massive girly dressing room makeover coming up in the next few days and you don't wanna miss it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.